what's up guys it's us again and i know you already got bored because we have the same outfits <laughs> we haven't changed it's we haven't but huh? <laughs> it's still the same day and at this point i'm actually feeling my own sweat smelling you're, you're fermenting <laughs> yeah yeah man. you can imagine uh we are now like uh, 600 kilometers since we started this journey and guys eh? We are not even close to the first destination inside Uganda. You know, they call Uganda the Pearl of Africa. Africa. The Pearl of Africa. And guys, actually, there are people that I'm, I'm what do you call it? I'm yearning to meet eh? the the dancers, the the young boys who are the dancers. Can, yeah. can you remind me the ghetto, ghetto kids. Yes, ghetto kids. I'm a very big fan of ghetto, ghetto kids. kids. The most, um, fatal woman on earth. the most fatal woman on earth. I'm, I'm praying that I, that I'm able to meet that woman. So if you can see this vlog, make sure I meet that woman. I also want to see the the source of River Nile, and yes. that will be our first destination in the next few in the next few minutes. Yes. Uh, what is it called? Ginger. Ginger. Yes. Ginger. So guys, let us see this River Nile that connects. Uh, that connects Egypt and, the rest of and Uganda and the rest of Africa. When we arrived eh, at the border, the first thing uh, we've done eh, is to acquire MTN line. Eh. We've used Mokazi's passport to acquire one MTN line. So you can imagine we are uh, uh, loading data uh, in that one line so that we can be able to nini all of us. For Airtel, they said that you must have lived in Uganda for at, at least, least one day. For at least one day for you to acquire that Airtel line. Eh. Now I drove from uh, what was it called Mbale. Mbale, yeah. Mbale to the border and right now is Mokazi on the wheels up to Jinja and it is a uh, two a uh, two hours distance from uh, the border to, yeah, to Jinja. And, and if you haven't watched the previous video, go and watch and uh, I've explained how I got arrested but then we sorted it out very quick uh, because of a small mistake that happened back in Kenya when I was getting a what do you call it yellow card. when I was getting a yellow card fever so guys let's let me see you in a few at uh, ginger as you also watch the environment and actually I've realized that uh, Uganda is green more greener than Kenya eh? more greener they say Uganda is the basket of Africa Basket so, of Africa, meaning huh? they have more food than I, I'm, I'm yet to see. Okay, uh, actually, I'm here for the food mostly. Okay. Uh, for the say, food, yes. Mm -hmm. They say Uganda, they have a lot of variety of food more than us Kenyans. Okay. They have uh, more food. Eh? More food, uh -huh. or maybe the same kind of food, but they cook it differently. Uh -huh. And yeah, it's the basket of Africa. So you can imagine when they call it the basket of Africa. I don't know whether it's because among all the African nations, it's, it's the most fertile land. The most fertile land. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. And so guys, also as we continue, we are going to see what 1,000 shillings, uh, Ugandan shillings can get you in uh, Uganda. Because I told you in the other video, I changed 15,000 Kenya shillings. That is like uh, $100. $100. Uh, and I was uh, given 352,000 Ugandan shillings. You can think it's a lot of money, but we are we are going to find out in the next town that we visit. Yeah. You know, Mokazi, something else that uh, I heard people say, and I don't know whether it's true because we are not going to find out and we will never find out. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they... You see, the, the Ugandan women, uh, they, they say that they, they have <laughs> stretched labia. <laughs> what is it called? Stretched labia. Stretched labia. What is, what is that? You don't know what labia is? I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> the, the thing. 
Yes, the thing, the you, long one. The long one. You guys go and search it out. I think for us, we will never find out. We will never. I see it here it is a stopover. So actually, this is the uniform that uh, that uh, you, you've seen that one. The police. The police. It's like wear white. Is it gray? Gray. Gray. Yeah. Uh, with white gumboots. Mm, uh, white gumboot and gray. So those are police here in uh, Uganda. And I've realized uh, we have a lot of motorbikes in Uganda. A lot of them. <laughs> We are here to see more in, in, in Kampala. Kampala. Mm. Actually, Kampala is crazy because of the motorbikes. Yeah. So if you, I think you can, if you can drive in Kampala without knocking one motorbike, mm. you need a medal from Museveni. All right, all right, guys. Remember, we are on a journey to cover five five countries by uh, by, road. by road. So wish us all the best. Yeah. Guys, guys. Uh, uh, I was I was asleep. And then I've been woken up by the rain. Mokazi, where are we? Uh, Iganga. Iganga. Uh, we are heading to Jinja. I believe it's not very far from here. Uh, so, yeah. And actually, guys, it's raining. It's raining uh, cats, cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. If not buffaloes and hyenas. <laughs> uh, but Uganda is beautiful. Uganda, Iganga branch, 1.1 kilometers. Uganda is beautiful, guys. Uganda is beautiful. See, this is the pearl of Africa. That is, oh, we have the pearl energies here also. Ah, nice one. I love fueling at that petrol station. Hi guys, well, I'm so sleepy. Yeah? I've not had enough sleep. I, here there is some noise. We are in a petrol station. Uh, we want to find something like a, it's like a break for us, and then we know what's next. Yeah. Uh, so guys, we are actually in uh, Ginger Town right now, and where are we headed to again? So we are uh, heading to the source of the Nile now. The source of the Nile. Uh, maybe driving maybe, into mm. driving into the Ginger Town at the moment. Okay. And uh, maybe, we'll, be, maybe we'll have about mm. an hour on the boat ride. Uh, maybe before that, you can tell us your names so that uh, we can have a very nice interaction with you. Yeah, Tuaha mm. is my name. Mm -hmm. I mainly trade as travel with Tuaha. Mm -hmm. uh, that is my business name. All right. So, guys, Tuaha is telling us that this is the you said the industry, the first industrial town of Uganda. The first industrial town of Uganda, meaning it has so many industries here. A lot of industries and mm -hmm. a lot of factories. Can, can you maybe mention some of them that are here in uh, Ginger? Yes, we have uh, one of the biggest, which is Nile Breweries. Uh -huh. uh, Nile Breweries, which is uh, mainly brewing Uganda's famous beer. Oh, well, which uh, is, that which is the is... Nile Nile beer. Oh, Nile, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And then uh, we have uh, Modern Tiles. Uh -huh. uh, that's a factory for tiles. Uh -huh. uh, we'll be able to see uh, some more industries as we exit ginger mm. town so it's like a sugar town. factories oh nice. yes like uh, we um on your way coming i'm sure you saw kachira mm -hmm. uh yes uh kachira uh we have uh, a lot of factories mainly mm. what we have here like uh mattress factories steel factories that is mainly what we have here so apart from the industries eh? yeah you make a, a right turn right yeah. What else uh, makes Juja stand out? Oh, G now, Ginger, Ginger is a uh, famously known. You make your, your right. Yeah. You make a U-turn. Yes. Oh, it's yeah. So Ginger is known uh, to be the adrenaline capital of East Africa. Mm -hmm. When what we say the adrenaline capital, mm -hmm. most of the adrenaline activities straight. Yes, go straight. 
most of the adrenaline activities in East Africa are done here in Jinja. You know, in Jinja it's where we find the source of the Nile. So we have the river Nile here and we have a lot of rapids and falls. Rapids? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is where people do white water rafting, bungee jumping, kayaking, uh, straight. straight. So that is where we are headed right now. So we are heading now to the source of the Nile. Okay. To see the source of the Nile. Right. Yes. Uh, so we have bungee jumping, kayaking, uh, water rafting, water, uh, water sliding. Uh, we have cy uh, cycling on the on the Lake Victoria. We have a lot of many activities, mainly done on water. Uh, yes. Uh, is it is it considered a big town like uh, yes. in the whole of uh, Uganda? Yes. Like in Nairobi, we can say that Kisumu and uh, uh, and um, Mombasa are big towns. What about here in Uganda? Can you consider this? Is, this is Jinja yes. as one of the big towns that we have we have around here. Yes, Jinja is considered to be one of the mm. uh, big towns we have here in Uganda. Okay. Uh, above all, we are able to know that Jinja mm. was a place which was highly developed by the Indians. Oh, by the Indians. By the Indian, yes. And Jinja is currently the oldest city in Uganda. Why do I call it the oldest? If you look at the kind of buildings around this area, mm. yeah? yeah, dated 1930, 1919, 1929, 1925, 1940, all these buildings. If, uh, uh, if, you, if you really observe it, mm -hmm. and uh, you now turn on to your left, you can see that kind of that kind of buildings. If you look at these, which are from the buildings here during the time of the Indians. Yeah, you can see they are very old buildings. Yeah. Yeah. So Jinja is considered as one of the major towns here in Uganda mm. and still one of the most important cities that we have at the moment. Uh, it is mainly developed after the arrival of the Indians into this area who were constructing the Uganda Kenya railway line. And uh, the industrialization I was telling you about was mainly done here after uh, the, the establishment of the first hydroelectricity plant in Uganda, which was called uh, Owen Falls Dam. So after the establishment of Owen Falls Dam, the Indians started up a lot of industries here or a lot of factories here uh, which tried to boost the development of this place okay, yeah i can see we have so we have, we have so many old structures around this area actually and also the design of the buildings eh, dates so many years back some of them have just been modified eh? yeah yeah modern but you can tell it is uh, the old designs, yeah? So, if you basically look at these buildings here, mm. uh, maybe on our way coming back from the from these activities that we are going to do so far, yeah. uh, we'll be able to see that these houses are built mm. with an years mm -hmm. written, and some of them, even the owner's names, yeah. would be written on these buildings. Uh, I told you that Jinja is the most designed city mm -hmm. here in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Now, someone will ask, what do you mean when you say most designed? Mm -hmm. If you go to most of our cities here in Uganda, you will get lost. Okay. Because of how the roads are actually uh, connecting to one another. Mm -hmm. Jinja is, is built in a way which I can call like in a grid form. Okay. Now, as we are driving straight, we'll intercept a road mm -hmm. that goes up. If you drive straight here, you exit Ginger. You exit you, Ginger? You exit. Mm -hmm. If you drive up here, mm -hmm. you exit. You exit Ginger also? Yes. If you mm -hmm. drive down, you still exit Ginger. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. When you go up still, these same roads will still do the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when you go to Kampala, uh, and you take one road, mm -hmm. you'll get lost. Uh -huh. It 
to take you to another road which is bringing you back to the same point okay or else it is actually taking you out it is not giving you an option mm. but while here in ginger it is totally a different thing because someone who designed here uh, had much more better plan and it looks much more designed and when you look to kampala i don't think kampala looks designed it's just more like people got money and they just started up buildings mm. that is not the same thing with here indeed yeah i can see that every building here is like so old yeah almost each and uh, that, that's why i told you that uh jinja is uh is Uganda's old town mm. because most of the cities here in Uganda mm. which had old buildings mm. these buildings had been have been destroyed mm. and then new buildings have have come up but Jinja they have kept the old, the old buildings the only thing they have done is to repaint maybe repaint Repair. or try to to give them a better look these were all indian homes We are now heading to this also one of the mm. local place. Okay. Uh, I don't call it the source of the Nile, okay. but uh, it's a place where we're going to have a boat okay. uh, to the point where Lake Victoria separates mm -hmm. uh, from uh, where River Nile, sorry, uh, splits from Lake Victoria at a point where the Nile River starts flowing northwards, mm -hmm. and uh, the water of the lake joins the water. That is coming down from the underground of the springs okay. uh, to form the world's famous uh, longest uh, river, which is called the River Nile. I'm actually seeing a lot of uh, posters eh, of uh, Nameless, and you see Nameless is one and our own from Kenya. I've seen so many posters uh, here around Ginger of Nameless, and at least I'm like, wow, now uh, there is one person I know from home who <laughs> is at home. <laughs> I feel at home in Ginger because I can see Nameless posters. So I've met Nameless once. In a, in a movie theater around uh, Ngong Road and Nameless, let me tell you, people around here know you, people around here appreciate your music, and they actually say that you are the biggest artist that you have in Kenya. I thought you should know that. So, so here we are. Uh, guys, let me show you. Uh, this, this is which, which river? No, is this, this is Lake Victoria. Maybe le let's. Oh, this is Lake Victoria? Yeah, this is Lake Victoria. Wow, wow, wow. Guys, this is Lake Victoria. This is Lake Victoria. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Those are islands or No, no, no. no. Uh, that is a that's a peninsula. It's not an island. It's a, a peninsula. Uh -huh. So it's just a, a piece of land just entering the water. So that's just a peninsula. Uh -huh. And then the island so is the one that we're able to see. Here. Lake Victoria this here. is the end point of Lake Victoria. At the end? Yes. Okay. So the large uh, water is the other side. Okay. So if someone is going to Kenya, someone is going yeah. to Tanzania, yeah. uh, they go this direction. This direction? Kenya, Tanzania, this direction. Okay. Kampala, uh -huh. Entebbe, uh -huh. this direction. The same direction. Because the water goes round of the area. Uh -huh. You get it? Yeah. And now when you go this side, yeah. this is the end point of the lake, Victoria. The end point? Yes. So that means the Nile yeah. is in that direction. The Nile? Okay. Yeah, so we'll be taking the other boat that is coming. That is the boat you're going to take. Okay. Do you want to go so guys here we are and uh, we will be we will be heading to the source of the, source of the, Nile. the source of the Nile yes I've only heard of uh, Nile in history books yeah yeah <laughs> so today we are going to make it to the place uh, where we are able to see the springs of the Nile bubbling up you know yeah. and then I'll be able to tell you a story about uh, this Nile River. Mm. 
mm. and we'll be able to understand mm. why do we call it the source of the Nile? The source, yeah. Yes. Okay. And why is it like uh, so much uh, sought, sought after or fought after? Because yeah. uh, there, there was an issue between yeah. e e uh, Egypt yeah. and Ethiopia. Yeah. You remember when they were building the dam? Yeah. So it was said that if they build that dam, yeah, uh, Egypt will not have will not have the water. water. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, there are two. We have two streams of the Nile. Okay. Yeah. Now the one that starts from Uganda is what we call the White Nile. Mm -hmm. the white then Nile. the one that is uh, that is starting in Ethiopia is the Blue Nile. Blue Nile. Yes. So maybe they had issues about the Blue Nile, the not blue the White Nile. Nile. Or not the White Nile. <laughs> yes. Ah, good. It's oh, we good. have the blue and the white. Correction, correction. Wow, guys, uh, it's a really nice history. So I can't wait to see the source of uh, uh, Nile. Eh? Yes, and the boat that is going to ferry us around eh, is actually here. Let me show you the boat. Remember, we are in Uganda. There we go. Now this one even has, is it a number plate? KKD number seven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why, why do they call Uganda the Pearl of Africa? Wow. Huh? What a lot of reasons that, to explain why we are called the Pearl of Africa. Uh -huh. So it is believed that uh, about 1907, Winston Churchill, one of the greatest uh, explorers in the world, uh, was winding up his trip here in Africa and he winded it up in Uganda. So according to his experience about the beautiful nature, the wildlife, the culture, the people, mm. and everything, he termed Uganda, according, according to his observation, yes. he came to a conclusion that Uganda was the most uh, beautiful part of Africa. And that's why he wow. nicknamed it the Pearl of Africa. So guys, we will be finding out whether Uganda is the most beautiful country in Africa or not eh? whether it's rumored or not so guys eh? let's get in so, uh, which direction are we facing uh we're going to face this direction okay this direction. Yes. okay uh, do you but, uh, have do you have a reason for that because uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are facing the knife we are going to the Nile. Oh, okay, okay. But so, to Leno Mars, right? So, you can come this side. We come that side? Yes. Okay. We can come and sit somewhere here. Alright. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. You can sit here. Here. Yes. <sighs> ah, nice one. Oh, guys. Of course, you can't come to this spot without noticing Twaha. Uh -huh. Without noticing? Twaha. Oh, travel with Twaha. Oh, so this is symbolic. And Twaha is your name. Yes. Ah, <laughs> nice one. Yeah, so this is the same person I've been using for all my boat trips on the Nile. This one? Yes. Uh, so because of the support yeah. and the people that I always recommend to him, okay. he recognized to... me. Uh, <laughs> it's Mama, that you own the Mama boat. Mama Land Are you yeah. sure? You, uh, yeah. you might be No, you must be the owner. <laughs> Exactly. I'm a, yeah. I'm a shareholder in terms of giving him business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, so once again, you're welcome to Uganda. Thank you. And uh, welcome to the Pearl of Africa. Uh, we know we are the most beautiful country in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we are about you, to find out. If you are not proud of uh, where, you come from. where you come from, yeah. then you're probably in the wrong place. So what should I say about Kenya? Uh, still, uh, you can always say Kenya is the most beautiful place that you've been to. <laughs> <laughs> Until I come to Uganda. Until you come to Uganda. The part yeah. of Africa. So, Uganda is a very most beautiful country, uh, and so far, at least, we are going to witness one of the beautiful things about Uganda. So far,
this is it. We are on to the second largest fresh lake in the world, which is uh, Lake Victoria. And you know, Lake Victoria is a lake that is shared by three countries. That is Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. With Tanzania having the biggest percentage uh, of the Lake Victoria, Uganda having the second largest part of Lake Victoria, and then Kenya has having the least or the smallest uh, let percentage. Me, let me ask Victoria. a question. Eh? Yes. Where is Migingo? Migingo Island. Uh, yes. Uh, not around here. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, probably we we will say as a Uganda, I will say we have given it to you. To get it. <laughs> yes. So where we are going this side onto our left or in this direction we are pointing, uh, this is where we find uh, Kenya and Tanzania. Okay. So this is the open lake. Why do we say the open lake? The biggest part of Lake Victoria is in this direction. So we have lots of islands when you go this area, like one of the islands which you're able to see over there. Yeah, you see the island? Yes. So that island is called Samuka Island. We have one of the nice resorts, which is called uh, Samuka uh, Resort. It's a very beautiful resort. Uh, where most of the people here in Jinja, other people from uh, Kampala, come to go and enjoy uh, a night or a weekend. Like so, that. so let me ask a question. What are they doing? Are they fishing? So these people are fishing. Huh? Jambo. <laughs> Also, we have fish around this area. Everywhere. Even yeah. around the lake, we have lots of fish. Ah, nice. So this side, all the way up, if we turn into this direction, we see like uh, some open land, more like a farm and some houses. Yeah. So that's a prison. That's a prison? A prison, yes. Uh, that is Chirinya prison. And then, if you look up here, that's another prison, which is Chirinya prison. So, uh, this one is in Busoga Kingdom, and this one is in Buganda Kingdom. So, how many kingdoms do you have in Uganda? I'm coming to, I'm going to come to that. Okay. <laughs> Let me know and jump there. Okay. what we see here is, these two prisons are put close to the water and very many other prisons in Uganda are put close to water. Why? Because so the biggest percentage of the uh, people here in Uganda are good swimmers like Twaha. We don't know how to swim. So obviously no one will attempt to run away. escape. So the other part, it's land, but now this side, the water works as the security. So a few people can risk their lives uh, crossing the, the lake in the name of uh, escaping. So the only way to escape is to learn how to swim. Exactly. Whereby it is very really difficult for you to cross. From that side to that From side. From that side. A few people here can actually do that. Who can cross? Maybe no. you say you cross <laughs> no. a little bit from the prison land to the neighbor's land. But of course you will still be identified by the way you're dressed. Mm -hmm. And of course the neighbors or anyone else will be able to not, to not see you and then you're taken back mm -hmm. to the prison. Uh, we are into... We are into a place which I may call no man's land. Where? So if I commit a crime... Where? Right now here. Will you will have, you'll be arrested because you're in Uganda. But you said it's a no man's land. But now land. it's no man's land in terms yeah. of kingdoms. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have Uganda. Uganda. So Uganda is a country. I yeah. know you, Uganda is really uh, diverse okay. in terms of everything. In terms of nature, wildlife, culture, the food, the traditions, everything is, is uh, diverse. So we're able to see that Uganda has about currently six kingdoms. And that is Buganda Kingdom, Toro Kingdom, Busoga Kingdom, Ankole Kingdom, Toro, and Renzururu Kingdom. Each of these kingdoms can speak their own language. Each of these kingdoms, they have their special uh, traditional dance. Each of these kingdoms has its own culture and traditions and norms. So, where we are, we are 
into the area where this site is the biggest kingdom in Uganda, known as which is called Buganda. Buganda. The people Baganda, the language Luganda, one person like me, Muganda, and the king Kabaka. This side where we came from, that is Busoga Kingdom. The people, Basoga, the language, Lusoga, having a unique staple food, having a different culture compared to the Baganda culture, and of course, having their own king, who is called the Chawazinga. And of course, separated in terms of geographic location. Not in terms of the distribution of people. Because in Jinja we have Baganda, in Kampala we have Basoka and Baganda, Banyapoli. So we are living peacefully together regardless of how diverse uh, the country is. We have about 56 indigenous tribes. At least each of these tribes can speak its own language. At least each of the 56 has its own uh, culture practices. So as you plan to fall in love with a woman from Uganda, please first learn about their culture before you fall in love with with them. That that's a, a that's a piece of advice. <laughs> Does that make a difference? Yes, like, of course. In terms of their culture. Yes. It's, uh, it's, some of us we are very single. Okay. I'm speaking for I'm, you. I'm married. You're married, yes. <laughs> yeah, very married. Me very, very married. Oh. <laughs> yes, you, you, you may still be married but single. Uh, I'm, no, just I'm, I'm married, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wife and two beautiful daughters. I'm just kidding, please. Uh, Don't take me serious. <laughs> Don't take me serious. So, you need to learn about the culture first uh, as you plan to fall in love with a uh, Uganda okay. uh, for the sake of uh, respecting our culture. Uh, we are a country that has tried so much yeah. to make sure that we keep our culture and our traditions alive. Okay. Uh, that's why. The country is still beautiful, uh, like the way it is. So all the night we have lots of uh, interesting things. So example, this is the source of higher No, 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 no. Okay. We're still on Lake Victoria. Uh, an example, we have lots of birds on this uh, river Nile. Okay. Uh, you'll be seeing quite a number of them around here. And if we are lucky enough, we'll be able to see some of uh, the following birds like the little egrets, uh, we have lots of kingfishers so far, we can see some kingfishers here, uh, the pied kingfisher. The only, know, the only thing I know about kingfisher is the drink itself. The, you, know, you know in Kenya there is a song that goes that uh, the drink by the name kingfisher is a panty remover. <laughs> <laughs> A song by Meza. Anyway, okay. I've yeah. never seen the birds. So, so we have these birds okay. with the blue, with the black dots, and then white in color. And then uh, we have the the cormorants. You can see them up there. Okay. And then uh, I can only see the cormorants. Of course, that is a, a common problem of. Africa for other people that are living on Lake Victoria. They obviously know this water with yeah. yeah. Yes, we can see the over there. That white the black. That looks like a vulture. Yeah, not a vulture. It's a very good uh, mm. swimmer. Uh, it also feeds on fish. Maybe as we keep going, you'll be able to see it swimming on the on the Lake Victoria here. No, it's a point to just see that Notice that actually. The water is flowing, not stagnant, like the way we see this water here. So here it's stagnant, but from the other side it's flowing? It is flowing. Okay. Yes. As we approach the Nile. As we approach the Nile. And then, remember I told you that is the open lake, so that is the big lake. But then when you're coming this side, you see, 
the size keeps on reducing so it keeps on narrowing it is more like the basin is being the, the, the water is being compressed by the by this kind of uh, should I call them not mountains but hills yeah. so the water is being compressed by these hills which are within the basin now uh, which will force it actually to flow let me let me let, let me ask a stupid question eh? yes. let me ask a very stupid question eh? uh, right now it's sunny uh, and uh, you guys decide to travel by boat, eh? like uh, two, three kilometers inside, yeah. Yeah? yeah. And then it starts raining. Yes. And there is this opening uh, on this side. Yeah. Because the shed is up to that point, eh? there is that opening. Yeah. Don't you think the boat is going to? Uh, what, what, what is it called? Do capsize? Capsize. Yeah. Uh, not really. So what happens when it's raining and you, you know, guys are here? when it's raining, yeah. and of course the, we have uh, maybe like strong winds coming in, yeah. that wind will be just going through. All through. Maybe if you had said yeah. that when there is a lot of waves yeah. on the lake, then that becomes a challenge. But the wind will do nothing and the rain will do nothing. Because whenever the water gets Even if here, the, the boat is filled with water. Of course, there is no way the boat will get, get filled with water. Because uh, there are always buckets where they always remove that water. Oh, buckets. Uh. And now also looking at the type of boat we are using. Yeah. You see that the entire floor is dry. Yeah. It's not wet. Yeah. So that shows you that actually... There is a drainage. And not, not, not a drainage. Yeah. But uh, there's no way the water can get inside. Yeah. Get inside here. Yeah. Okay. So we are maybe ninety percent safe. Remember, we have the life jackets here. Please, you can show people the life jackets. Uh, yeah. People we, we would be like, why are you not putting on the life jackets? Maybe we think at the moment we are safe. <laughs> Just kidding. Just yeah. kidding. But uh, we always have the life jackets, of course, which can hold in case of uh, any water emergency. And of course, we have the ginger marine. What we see those big boats? For those big boats, yeah. Yeah, and that is actually the ginger boat. So now we're going back to we'll pass by that area. So you shouldn't worry about the boat capsizing. It will not capsize. At this point, I remember I told you the water is stagnant on Lake Victoria. I want you guys to look at this water here. Yeah? Looks stagnant. Now, I want you to look at the water right in front. You're going to start seeing like the level, uh, the movement of this water changing. Here it is stagnant. And where we see like those boats, you can see the water flowing now. Yes. Yeah? Mm. So, we are getting close to the point, so, uh -huh. which we call the source of the Nile. If he takes off the boat right now here, mm -hmm. because the water is starting to flow, this boat will move itself. It's to been drifted. Apart. It is going to be drifted, not going this side, mm -hmm. but going the other side. Solo Huzik is a Moko, eh? Not to Sakunaya. Now you can see the water. Well, we see like the rocks. The water again, I hear it. So, we can go away. Okay, got it. So, now this is the point where we know as the, the stop or the end of the Lake Victoria. So, Lake Victoria ends here. And now the Nile River starts flowing. As it flows, it doesn't flow going this side. But the Nile River flows going this side. You can now start looking at our boat being drifted by the water. Yeah. So from this point, if uh, these people move, you'll be able to see the springs over there. You see the springs? You see the water like bubbling out? 
yeah so all this field all this area is a point where we find the springs like the way you see all that surface you see the bubbles bubbling out from the ground and then the water that comes on Lake Victoria that does not join the springs but rather it goes circle and then it starts flowing coming this side mm -hmm. if you look down here where that boat is almost getting mm -hmm. you can still see the water bubbling yeah. coming out yeah mm -hmm. so it is bubbling round, and then the springs are coming down so this is the point where river Nile starts flowing yeah Mm -hmm. at this point now at that point mm -hmm. where that boat is mm -hmm. and as we can see we switched off this boat where the other bombastic boat is mm -hmm. and look where we are right now drifting backwards so the water of the nile is now drifting us mm -hmm. onto the nile not back on the lake victoria mm -hmm. but if we switch it off like the way we switched off right now mm -hmm. and we give it time it will flow up to the bridge we have a bridge yes so, so that the, means the, the water bridge. is now exiting mm. to egypt to southern sudan to sudan this side exactly going mm. to the Mediterranean sea mm -hmm. you get it yeah. but the river starts all the way from the other point mm -hmm. going uh, to the Mediterranean sea so this is all the nile river and all this area is mainly dominated by the springs of river nile remember 70% of the water that make up River Nile comes from Lake Victoria. 70%. 70%. And then 30% of the water that make up Lake Victoria, that make up uh, River Nile, they come from the underground springs. All right. So all this area is full of springs. Because the water, we are going against. We are going against the, the direction where the water is moving. So we are going to the point where the Nile River starts from. Uh, originally, the signpost that showed the actual point where the Nile River starts from was washed away because of a lot of uh, uh, the water volume. Heavy rains increase on the water levels. Uh, the point that uh, shows the source of the Nile was moved. Uh, we can still see it uh, from that point where we'll be standing. This is a restaurant. Oh, wow. What is this a restaurant? Uh, it's currently a craft shop. It's carrying? It's a craft shop. Or oh, craft shop. Yes. It says uh, Scanway to Amol Hotel and Restaurant. All right, so we can come Amol, the fine dining restaurant at the start of uh, River Nile. Oh, wow, guys, that was a very amazing journey. A very amazing journey. So we get out of the boat and uh, come to these beautiful restaurant over here a suspension that is the most recent bridge on the Nile and then the last one which we see under all the two bridges the last one which is completely down uh, that is the very first bridge for road transport here on the Nile uh, that was commissioned by the Queen of England in 1954 so next to that last bridge the one which we see which is almost on the level of the water uh, that is where we find the Owen Falls Dam, the dam that generated our first hydroelectricity power here in Uganda. And uh, at the middle one, with the suspension, that is the very first suspension bridge we have here in Uganda. And actually the only bridge which we allow people to take pictures on. All the other bridges, 
you're not supposed to take pictures uh, other than that one so it's more of a crime to take pictures on any of these bridges uh, to take a picture to of take or a to picture take a on on the bridge or, st or standing on them eh? yes okay, okay. Yes. or even when you're driving you're not allowed apart from only that bridge for the suspensions and that is the most recent bridge we have here in Uganda which was uh, opened in uh, 2018 all right so guys that is it that was our tour to the source of river nile